This episode of Igalia Chats is brought to you by Igalia, an open source consultancy with a proven track record of landing features and devices from XR to handheld, deep expertise with embedded devices, advancements in flagship web browsers, kernel contributions, and much more. To get in touch or to learn more, visit igalia.com. Okay, hi, I'm Brian Cardell. I'm a developer advocate at Egalia. And I'm Eric Meyer, also a developer advocate at Egalia. Thanks for joining us this week. Um, we're going to talk about the coming adpocalypse. And Ooh, that sounds yeah, good. I know, right? Full disclosure, Egalia works with almost every tech company or has worked with almost every tech company. We're not trying to you know, advocate for one or, or not for another. We're just looking at the situation right yeah looking at the state of the of the landscape pretty much yeah. yeah it's we've pretty much every uh company that we're likely to mention in this conversation we've we've probably done contract work with or may currently be doing contract work with um and yeah we're not here to say this company bad that company good etc or or in the very least we work on yeah all the yeah, yeah. products you know so, so and great great people that we work with yep. at all of the companies too. Okay, let's get into it. Uh, Long-time listeners will probably have a guess as to where this is going. Uh, but if you're here for the first time, Brian and I have talked over the years about funding for browsers and funding the web ecosystem. You know, we've had guests to talk about that. Uh, and then a couple of weeks ago, a U.S. district judge ruled that Google has a monopoly in two markets general search services and general text advertising. And one possible remedy for that, and what a lot of people are forecasting is a relatively likely remedy, is to prohibit Google paying browser makers for exclusive search placement, uh, what are called default agreements, right? So when you first install a browser, generally when it fires up and you wanna search, it's using Google for that search because Google paid the browser maker some very large amount of money probably to make it the default. And if that were the remedy, and to be clear, this is, you know, if this happens, it's probably a few years down the road um, because antitrust cases notoriously take years and years. I mean, older listeners will remember when, when AT&T was ordered to be broken up by the government because it had a monopoly. Very old listeners. <laughs> well, okay. It took like 11 years to get to that point from the time the suit was filed to the point where the breakup was finally ordered and enforced. We're uh, four years into this process, I believe. I, I think this case kicked off in 2020 or so. Uh, so it might be a few more years before we get to that point. And it's entirely possible that there will be other remedies that will be sought or that Google will agree to in the meantime. But there's a really strong chance certainly much stronger than there's ever been, that major amounts of money that are moved to browser makers will be prohibited. So as a little bit of background, Mozilla, for example, according to the findings during the trial, uh, got $400 million from Google in 2021 for default placement of Google as the search engine in Firefox. And if such agreements are outlawed, then Mozilla will suffer a $400 million, let's say $500 million, but a $500 million funding cut. Do you know what Mozilla's uh, total operating budget is? I do not. It's very close to that number. $400 million? <laughs> because uh, that has been since the inside, like at the inception, mm -hmm. which we, we should talk about. We should like yeah. rewind a little bit because the last time there was an antitrust uh, in the United States, we talked about antitrust actions against Microsoft for yep. being the default browser. Mm -hmm. It was in the process of that uh, shakeup happening that led to the creation of Mozilla, right? The open source mm -hmm. version of Netscape, more or less. Um, right. And, you know, they didn't have a funding model. Like, basically, they got an initial grant from some wealthy benefactor mm. that kept them going for a while but you know what what is the plan for open source like how are we going to make this work like it sounds good but who who all is contributing and why are they contributing and all that kind of stuff right and at the same time google was 
up and coming search engine. They had this great idea and they saw this thing that like the web needs search, like really good search is how we would get around. It wouldn't be just, you know, following links from a telephone book kind of thing. Like we needed a search, really good one. They had made a really good one and they made a deal with Mozilla pre 1.0 and they made a deal that funded all of Mozilla. It was, you know, millions and millions and millions of dollars to be the default search. And that drove traffic to Google, which was good for Google, you know? Right. And it paid for Mozilla, which was good for Mozilla. So it was like kind of the original the original bargain. Anyway. Yeah. The the seeds of where we are are, as always, in the past. <laughs> and there's no way to predict how this is going to turn out. But, you know, the $400 million to Mozilla in 2021 so you know if remedies you know if let's say that the end result of this lawsuit is that google is prohibited from paying browser vendors to be the default search engine right the you know browser vendors can choose that but google is prohibited from paying them let's just let's say that happens in 2030 so maybe at that point mozilla doesn't get 500 million dollars from google or whatever they're operating cost is at the time. They're not the only ones who are being paid. Apple, uh, according to the findings of the court in, I think, 2023, Google paid them $20 billion to be the default search in iOS browsers and macOS browser, you know, Safari for that matter, uh, on, on macOS. And so... Also LG, Motorola, Samsung... <laughs> Yes, they, they pay all those people as well. I don't know how much. I haven't found those numbers. I haven't read all the way through the entire 300-page uh, decision at this point. But yeah, I mean, they pay, Google pays a lot of different vendors to be the default search. And that was found, I mean, that was part of the reason why the judge in the end ruled that Google was a monopolist in two markets. And I just, I want to take a, just a second to step aside and say how kind of both weird it is and also satisfying to my young cyberpunkish self that like US district judges are ruling on whether or not someone is a monopolist on general text advertising. Like that's just <laughs> such a William Gibson statement. Um <laughs> just so weird. It's, you know, this little this thing that we do, this the this web stuff and people type in words and they search for stuff and, you know, they get search services that are is like becoming matters of judicial law. Kind of, it's a, it's a little bit of a, oh yeah, the stuff we do is actually super important as a, like the ecosystem we work in is incredibly important and it matters a whole lot. Uh, anyway. So this is big news because it's in the U S but you yeah. know, like it's, it's not only in the U S really, because I mean, we have, Similar things happening in Europe and the UK and Japan. Like there are so many antitrust cases mm -hmm. hammering at all ends of this. Right. And it, and it's right. like, I know we're talking about Google. It's like really important, but it, you know, it's not just Google. Like it's Google, it's Apple, it's Meta, it's yep. um, uh, ByteDance. It's I'm leaving somebody off and they're going to yeah, be offended. I'm... Yeah. I, I don't mean to offend any trillionaires. Sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they can be very expensive to offend. What's fascinating about that is like, it is very interconnected and that plays into why some of these cases are very difficult, right? Because, True. you know, that, that initial setup, what was good for Mozilla and good for Google is like, mm -hmm. well, sure. Okay. That's fine. What's wrong with that? That like, yeah, but the, the, what's wrong with it is that it grew into this, you know, in, in many ways, a very, monoculture ecosystem but we talk about you know we need to have all these browser engines and you and i've i know you and i have talked about this a lot but you know we talk about you know we need to have x number of browser engines but the concern that you and i have had and i think you know you've had you've felt more deeply for longer um has been yeah but it's all dependent on one source of funding basically and that's that that's what's sort of what's wrong with <laughs> that initial setup. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I don't think at first anyone was too concerned because it was, all right, well, a search engine and a browser are, you know, are working together and it's a, it's a virtuous feedback loop, 
uh, is probably what it seemed like at the time. And that's, that's the interesting thing about these sorts of situations. You know, it, the responses to changes in the market can seem like, oh yeah, that's a really good deal for everybody. And then 10, 15, 20 years later, you realize, okay, that was a good deal for everybody at the time. Unfortunately, it has now mm -hmm. grown and twisted in such a way that it's not a good deal for everybody. It, you know, it's, it's a good deal for a few people and it's increasingly a bad deal for everyone else. Um, we potentially face a real reckoning here. Um, let's say that again, I'm coming back to, let's say that the, the remedy is Google's not allowed to pay for exclusive placement anymore. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're allowed to pay for placement, but they can't, they can't pay for exclusive placement. Okay. And let's say that that's, you know, constructed in such a way that that means that, you know, Google ends up not being the search engine that a lot of people choose, you know, during the trial, people estimated that if Google just were prohibited from paying Apple, like if they did not have that default deal with Apple and uh, all Apple users were defaulted to some other engine. Bing. Yeah, Bing, DuckDuckGo. I, I'm using Bing because there's a statement from one of the people from Apple that there isn't enough money to make them use Bing as the default. Okay, whatever. Uh, but like during the trial, it was estimated that if just that deal were broken, Google would lose about 65% of its revenue. Wow. <laughs> that's, that, that's painful. Wow, um, I've not seen that statistic. That's shocking to me. Yeah. Um, um, I assume that's from iOS users. It's from, you know, I basically yeah. iPhone users would be my guess. Um, <clears throat> yes, there are many people who use Mac OS. I'm one of them. You're another. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I would assume that that's a lot of it is the mobile search. That's right. probably just US based. That that would make more sense okay. because the US based market is wealthy and more iPhone sure. than the rest okay. of the world. Yeah. Fair enough. That that could well be US based since this is a US district judge who's talking. Right. But you know, even if it's 50% or 30% or mm. something like that, that's a huge hit. And you know, this is not me crying tears over oh Google will be doomed. A 30% hit would mean a lot of layoffs. It would be the workers who would suffer. Google itself would continue. Mm -hmm. um, but in that realm, so would workers at other places like Mozilla, mm -hmm. quite possibly. Um, potentially at Apple. Like, well, I mean, where would where would Mozilla get funding to carry on? Like it has... Exactly. I think it has a little bit of savings. But, right. um, but how long would that last? Yeah. And, you know, unless they've managed to build up, you know, a multi-billion dollar war chest that is earning them enough interest that they could spin that out for a decade. But even, you know, that's still, even there, it leaves them in a very precarious position yeah. of what, what, how to spend that money. Right. So exactly. They've been in this position for a long time because this has been, you know, since the beginning, this has mm -hmm. been the case. This is not a new, a new thing. Like yeah. Mozilla has known forever that all its eggs are in this basket, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep. And they have tried a number of times over the years to like, um, find additional revenue streams, you know? Mm -hmm. So they, I don't know if you recall, but like back in the early phone days, there was like the boot to gecko idea. They were going to make something that was like, I think it was even before Android came along, but, um, you know, it was very much like Android, you know, it's like open mm -hmm. source mm -hmm. operating system that was all integrated with the browser. And, yeah. um, you know, they were going to have deals with tell that there were, there were a few that are based on, on that, uh, and then, you know, Mozilla eventually was like, this is losing money. It's not getting us anywhere. We need to tighten the budget and like mm -hmm. refocus our efforts. Mm -hmm. uh, but there was like that. It was going to be on phones. There was, there were Firefox phones. Yep. But what else? I don't know. There were, there were several other <laughs> attempts at like, how are we going to make our money? That isn't this. Right. Now they're working on maybe becoming an ad network. Right. I think, um, uh, there's experiments Maybe. with AI, you know, like they're doing mm -hmm. experiments with AI and it's like, you know, how much do you spend on that? Also, they're, they have money into like, basically like activism and lobbying around internet causes, you know? And like, yeah, those are, those are good things to do, but also, you know, who's paying for the browser? <laughs> how are we paying for the browser? Yeah. And if you're operating costs are half a billion dollars. <laughs> Let's say, you know, 
400 million a, a few years ago, but we'll just, we'll round it to half a billion dollars mm -hmm. uh, per year. Where's that going to come from? And, you know, or if you don't get it, what do you take from, right? That that was the point I was making, right? Like, okay. you know, let's say that all the spigot is cut off and, well, mm. probably Bing could give them an offer, you know, and it wouldn't be mm. uh, subject because Bing is not, not really a, not a, a monopoly there <laughs> no. in the same way. So, or I don't know, maybe DuckDuckGo or whatever. Sure. Yeah. So they could get some money from a default deal. They could send a lot of traffic their way and, you know, mm -hmm. but let's say that that deal is more like 50 million or, you know, yeah. it's like for whatever reason, I'm not saying it would have to be necessarily. I'm just saying like, for whatever reason, let's say it's much, much smaller. Right. Yeah. Even yeah. 250 million. That's, you yeah. know, Bing is yeah. like, here's, here's a quarter of a billion dollars. That's still a 50% cut more or less. I mean, depending yeah. on what they do. And so, <clears throat> yeah. How are they going to, yeah. How do you make ends meet? What, what do... aren't you going to do? You know, right. exactly. are you are going to get rid of the activism. Are you going to get rid of the, the things you're hoping will replace your revenue stream? Are you going to focus on the browser? And like the trouble with focusing on the browser is, well, it doesn't have a revenue model other than search, right? Right. Yeah. I, I would not know how to square that circle. I mean, you know, and I don't know where, where all their money goes. And probably too big amount of it goes to executive. I can tell you that. Well, yeah, probably that tends to be how things work in the, at least in the U S and many other places as well. But anyway, we're not actually here to try to solve Mozilla's budgetary situation because it, it's kind of at a higher level than that. It's the, okay, if this massive spigot of money gets closed, mm -hmm. what? like over at Apple, right? What, Apple got paid $20 billion with a mm -hmm. B by Google. Now, to Apple, <laughs> that's, you know, it's a, maybe a, it's a, maybe a little bit more than couch cushion change, but it's, oh, it's not. A fifth of their, it's a fifth of their profit, right? All right. So that that's pretty good. But they also have, what, $3 trillion in assets or savings or whatever. Like, yeah, probably. You know. If the twenty billion dollars got shut off, it would be a dent in their profit margin, but it would not mean that they would necessarily have to like cut the WebKit team in half. They could, they could choose to devote more of their own money to mm -hmm. that than um, maybe they do now. Right. But right now, it's an easy calculation, right? Right. Like, the question is, would they? Right. The question is, if if it's like, well. This team used to make us $20 billion a year. And now, you know, in the immediate aftermath of such a remedy, it's making us $0 per year. Yeah. We, um, I mean, we started this uh, web ecosystem health thing back in 2020 or 2021, something like that. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. Might even have been 2019. And, you know, we've talked about these things on the podcast and I have on my blog. Like uh, yeah. a number of people have said like, oh, yeah, but, you know. Like those budgets aren't connected. Like, you know, like there's no, there's nothing in there that ties, you know, Apple is funding Safari. Right. And Google is funding a default search deal. And those two things are unrelated. Right. Um, but at the same time. Technically, sure. But <laughs> yeah, um, right now it's an easy calculus, right? Like um, if 20 billion comes in and you're like, okay, here's, you know, whatever. 500 million or 200 million or whatever it costs them to have the safari team mm -hmm. it's easy like why even question it right yeah but if you suddenly lose like a fifth of your profits in one swoop yeah i mean there's no way that we don't start like scrutinizing and looking at like okay what Mm. that's not great for us. I mean, we need to make some changes because shareholders don't want us to lose a fifth of our profits, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, and you know, it, in that world where there's lots of court things going around and it's like kind of a pain in the butt, like I could imagine, you know, Apple saying, eh, you know what? Like, yeah, maybe it's not worth, maybe it's not worth it. You know, like, yeah. Uh, or maybe, because, you know, also they only, they're the only ones that don't compete on every operating system. I mean, you know? Yeah, um, that's true. Yep. Yeah. And so. it, that actually, you bring up something that uh, actually made me think back to 
the Microsoft antitrust actions um, that, that you brought up earlier, um, I remember talking to somebody who I will not name, but they worked at micro, Microsoft at the time. And I was talking with them about the default browser situation, not the default search situation, but the default browser situation, uh, which is why, micro, you know, basically why Microsoft got sued um, because mm -hmm. it was, they were creating a browser monopoly. And uh, we were having a conversation about, you know, what, what their priorities internally were and all this sort of thing. And, you know, not, I don't want to give any of the details as to how we got here, but I said, so basically what you're telling me is that one of the market forces that companies and companies respond to is litigation and not in the sense of, oh my God, we can't afford this monetarily because Microsoft at the time had, you know, tons and tons of money, just like Google and Apple do now, just like Microsoft does now. Um, you know, it's not that they couldn't afford it if, even if the court at the time had said, you know, you have to pay a billion dollars. would be like, okay, that's going to hurt, but we can afford it. No, it was the, how much time it takes to prepare, like all the people in Microsoft who would have to prepare for testimony and have to show mm -hmm. up in court and all that, like that is the actual cost to giant mega corporations of litigation is the work that has to be done to prepare for that. And then to actually go through the legal process, you know, like I say, have to come to court and testify. And so you have to have spent tons of time on, you know, going through all of your emails uh, to see if there's anything that touches on it. If you, there are any conversations you can recall that the lawyers need to know about, you know, being coached by the lawyers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the things that happen. And now that all of that is time that you are not spending on things that the business would like to do. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the friction that acts as a market force and sometimes causes companies to say, yeah, you know what? We're not at fault here necessarily. We are, we don't think we're at fault here. This isn't worth it. Right. Mm -hmm. So Apple maybe says like, this kind of has nothing to do with us. And yes, we lost $20 billion. Um, and that sucks, but you know, if, if this keeps going, you know, we get pulled in like at people at Apple were testified at this trial and that took away time and energy from doing things for Apple, um, mm -hmm. like technical things. Maybe eventually Apple says, you know what, if we just exit this entire space and we don't have to worry about this, we got our own legal problems. Thank you. We don't need to be dealing with somebody else's legal problems. That's a risk. That's, that's always a risk. So there's this, you know, obviously there's this question that is very important to us is like, what happens, right? If it, um, yeah, if, if the funding disappears, but there, there's other aspects of this that are also, I think, relatedly interesting to us as people who are interested in open source and the web and the internet mm -hmm. and technology, like all this is intricately woven because you know, like, let's create this default deal. Mm. Sure. Right. I mean, like, well, what's wrong with that? Like, it just makes good business sense. Right. It makes good business sense for both of them. Um, mm -hmm. And then it's like, uh, oh, well, hmm, we're paying for like other browsers. Why are we paying for other browsers when we could, we could make our own browser? You know, like, yep. It's like, OK, now you're on both ends of that. And then it's like, uh, oh, we're paying for to be a default on iOS. We could. We could just, we could do that. <laughs> like, and I mean, I'm not saying that this is how it played out because like, I know at the time you had, like, I, like I said, like Mozilla also was trying to do this, right? Like also was trying to, so they're all like good technological decisions. They're all good business decisions. They're, you know what I mean? Like they're, none of them are seem off really, you know, but we end up with like Android. Uh, it doesn't come with a store. Um, it rather, it can come with the store, but if you want the store you have to sign a google contract which um basically almost everyone does almost mm. and that contract says that your operating system has to have google chrome installed by default along with 11 other google applications and yeah i mean people can delete them but you know they the standard android stock comes with all the google stuff you know yep which all the google stuff points to more google stuff yeah. and all of this then is also 
in part, but a big part of the reason why we have this lawsuit is because um, all of this is how like the search engine learns about you and it learns about websites and it learns all this stuff and it can then use it to both make search better, but mm -hmm. also to give like targeted advertising. Right. Um, and I, I guess very, very complex to unwind. Do you know what I mean? Yep. Like, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I said in, uh, I don't know why I wrote the piece web rise, but like, when you when you finally see this, you know, when you finally like rewind, you see how interconnected everything is and how ultimately if you start pulling at these threads, what what is going to come apart, you know? Yeah. So like there are as part of this, there are people talking about like not just default search, but like maybe Google gets broken up, you know? Um yeah. Maybe you're not allowed to compete in in this particular way. Maybe um and it's going to be very, very interesting to see as we begin to pull these threads, like what happens? Yeah. This is a, a big part of uh, the presentation that we did at W3C last year with uh, Robin Berjon and mm. his thing about rewilding right. is, is dealing with this, right? Is that, that like we, I mean, I don't think this is exactly how he meant it, but at the end of the day, it comes down to we have really kind of hyper optimized a few things at the end of the day yeah and then built everything on that and it's like that xkcd comic where it's like you know like this whole big infrastructure oh, held up by this one little by, block kind of you know right and in this case it's a whole big infrastructure that's held up by google default search deals um in 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 a lot of ways um yeah it's yeah i mean the commentary that i've seen and i am no i'm neither lawyer nor uh seer but yeah the commentary I have seen has said that probably not break up Google, but of course that that depends on if the ruling were made today. <laughs> it, right. it doesn't doesn't account for what Google may or may not do to potentially annoy a ruling judge over the next few years, or to make the ruling judge happy. Who knows? That's always a possibility. It, it will be appealed, whatever it is, anyway. Oh yeah, so like the original ruling was also to break up Microsoft. Yes. But... And it was appealed, and but we didn't break up Microsoft. No, no, we didn't. Um, and also, Microsoft is the default browser on Windows operating system. Yeah. Yes. Well, <laughs> what are you going to do? Um, apparently, not what you said you were going to do. But yeah, there there have been other speculations that it it could be that eventually the ruling is that Google's allowed to pay for uh, default search deals, but every browser has to like offer a search engine choice screen, right? Mm -hmm. When you, when you first launch a browser, it's like, it, you know, it, it can't just offer you like browsers now, like I, I use Firefox um, and I can always re I can always change my default search engine. And I actually have, I use DuckDuckGo, but I also like when I click in the search, uh, when I click on the little search icon in my search field, it like, it will let me, search a specific search engine or even source just this one time. So like I just clicked on it and uh, on my little uh, magnifying glass icon in the search field and under right underneath it, it says DuckDuckGo search. And then this time search with, and there's Google, Amazon, Bing, eBay, and Wikipedia are the choices that I have. So I could this time click on the Wikipedia symbol, type in my search term and just this one time, it will only search Wikipedia. And then the next time, if I don't pick, it'll just go to my default, which as I say, in this case is DuckDuckGo. But when on I which first- browser are you? On Firefox. But when I first installed it, my default was Google, <laughs> right? I had to go change it. And we, uh, Wolvik uh, has something similar in that you can pick what you want your default search engine to be. Um, <clears throat> most browsers do, I think almost every browser. Well, I don't know about mobile browsers, but every desktop browser I've ever interacted with lets you in some way fiddle with, uh, you know, who's, who's going to be my default search engine. And so rather than firing up the browser with a, with, and there's just all searches go to one place. And if you want to dig around in the preferences to change that, you can, one possible remedy is the first time you launch a browser, like a pop-up screen comes up that says you need to pick which search engine you want to use as your default. 
and you cannot go any further until you do. Uh, that's a possible remedy. Um, so that was part of the remedy in the Microsoft case. Yep. Um, I think there is an issue with that that I've never heard an answer that I'm really satisfied with, which is then who really decides what's in there? <laughs> so like for Wolvik, for example, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we decide, right? We, yeah. we give you, I mean, you can pick whatever you want. Like you can add one, but you mm -hmm. know, in the choice screen where we make it nice and easy for you to add some, we just have some market leaders that are in there, right? Like yep. We just, we just chose some, yep. but it does mean that whoever is making that choice screen has some ability to exclude or include people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like, I don't know, could you get in a situation where it's like, we're paying to be at the in the center you know what i mean like yeah like the, the place where your eyeballs go the most or mm -hmm. you know there's all these different things that they go like we, we want to pay to be included whatever mm -hmm. um but yeah there's I, another I, aspect of this as well when it comes to do you want what do you want to be your default browser what do you want to be to, your default search which is i think that there are maybe some important differences and I'm not sure that currently consumers have a great way to know what they are, you know? Yeah. There is a difference between Chrome and other Chromium browsers. Like there are differences and I don't know how a regular consumer knows that. Right. Some are better or worse <laughs> on, on different axes, whatever you care about. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, how do you become a competitor that gets into that mix? Yeah, I mean, browsers are better or worse. So are search engines. <laughs> apparently, yeah, that's what I mean, right? Yeah, yeah. Apparently, Apple thinks that Bing is terrible. That's what Apple thinks. Um, mm -hmm. I actually did use Bing for a few years before I switched over to DuckDuckGo. But yeah, so how is a user, like you say, how is a user going to know if they're given this? You know, you just installed a browser, you must pick a search engine. How do they know which one's any good? <laughs> All right. do, do they have to be asked, like, is a court going to say that they have to then ask, be re-asked in a month, do you want to change your search engine, um, you know, or something like that? Uh, will the court leave the door open for search engine companies to pay for placement on that choice screen? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, presence or placement or both, or will that also be, you know, prohibited? Uh, will the court order that the various, the, whatever the list of search engines is, it has to be shown in a random order so that there isn't first mover advantage. And there's or already- alphabetical advantage. Or, or alphabetical <laughs> advantage, right. Yeah. Uh, and there's already a first mover advantage, regardless of how things are, are presented. As long as Google is on there, like it's literally the verb that we use for searching online, right? Yeah. <laughs> because it's like sort of the default verb, like, you know, I need a Kleenex or I'm going to go Xerox something. I need to Google something. Somebody first installs a, a browser and they don't know a ton about all this stuff. They're going to be like, oh, Google, I've that's that's what I call it when I search for things. I'm going to use that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think this is interesting because there was a part of this. There was a study that was included in here that was from I think 2016 that was comparing when there was still a Windows phone, right? Mm. And they were saying that like on Apple and Google, it's like 90% or something like that, or even more than that maybe of searches went to Google, you know, because they were the default. Mm. But on Windows devices, obviously, you know, that was not the default. Bing was the default. But 25% or just, I, I could be messing that up, but it's like in the, it's in the right ballpark, you know. Uh, twenty five percent went to Google, so that that's like shows the power of the defaults, though, right? Because yeah. like if you if you think that the thing that you're saying is true, we could which one would you turn to? I guess maybe your point is that they don't have the choice, so they never they never if they were given the choice, they would probably choose to Google because it is the verb. Yeah, I mean it's they have had twenty some years. They've had an entire generation, basically. Sure to cement themselves in the zeitgeist, as it were, in the cultural mindset of that's how you search for things. Right. Um, and, you know, all these other things are for nerds or what, right. if, if people are even aware that they exist, a lot of people use Bing, but don't realize they're using Bing um, because they don't really pay attention to it. It's just like, oh, here's a search box. I'm going to type into it. Um, and they still call it Googling, right? And the reason that we're bringing this up, right? The reason we're talking about this, even though it might be years before any of this 
comes to any sort of a conclusion, any sort of a resolution, is that let's say that that spigot gets shut off. What's the, what are we going to do? What's the ecosystem going to do? Now is the time to think about that. Now that there's actually a sort of measurable chance of, oh, like Mozilla might lose, you know, nearly its entire operating budget. Where are they going to get that money from? Uh, Apple might take a 20% hit to its profits, its annual profits. And what is that going to cause? And what are we going to do about it? And, you know, unfortunately, I don't think we have answers per se. We have had many proposals. You you know, we've, we talked with Robin Berzon uh, recently here on the podcast about things that maybe could be done to rewild the internet. Um, other people have done that kind of thinking. There have been many, you know, sort of essays, proposals, arguments as to, well, here's how we could do this so that we don't have to worry if somebody waves a magic wand and Google suddenly disappears, or if a judge orders Google to stop giving money to everybody else. Uh, whatever causes a major disruption to that funding pipeline, what are what do we do? And there are proposals out there, but it's something that I think a lot of us, and I even I fall into this category from time to time, just think, I'm just going to worry about what's in front of me and the rest of it will play out uh, however it plays out and I will adapt to it uh, when that time comes. But that's, you could argue that's how we got to where we are now. <laughs> and it's not a good long-term plan. A good long-term plan is to think about this, to consider how could each of us, but also how could the community, the ecosystem, weather this sort of a, a shift what can we do to to make the entire system more robust, which is absolutely necessary? And you know, start talking about it. You you don't have to, you don't even have to say when talking about it. Here's the solution. It could be to say, I'm worried about this too, because that conversation about you know, hey, I'm worried about this. Hey, this is starting to look like a real possibility. What's going to happen? That's starts to create the momentum for proposals to be more seriously considered and vetted and worked on that. I mean, we're overdue for this conversation as you, you've been saying for years, I've, I've been saying for a lot of people have been saying for years, we're overdue for this conversation, but now, you know, it's, it's, a, it's more relevant. It's more practical. It's more, uh, immediate. Yeah. You don't want to be, uh, you don't want to be worrying about it when the building's on fire, right? You want to yeah. worry about like, how do we prevent the fire in the first place? That, that or be if, the better or if we can't prevent the fire, how do we suppress the fire? Right. Right. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. don't worry, don't worry about uh, the sprinklers uh, installing the sprinkler system. When the fire has started, you install the sprinkler system. Exactly. Well yeah. beforehand and the right. halon system in your server room. Um, Cause you don't want a sprinkler system in there. Trust me. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's, that's what I would want to see come out of this just you know in the sort of in the mind of day-to-day -day workers on the web we all participate in a what is now a critical piece of global infrastructure that sounds like it's arrogance but it's really not that is just the deal the internet the web these are critical global global infrastructure in much you know pretty much the same way that sanitation and electricity are um mm -hmm. you know yes electricity could still probably run. I don't even know if electricity could run without the internet and the web anymore. So much has been has been put on the web. It would be difficult. Like so, yeah. This is this is important, and it's becoming more important. It's more salient, as uh, as some would say. And so, we really need to be talking about this. And you know, by talking about it, hopefully, we get to a culture shift. Um, doesn't even have to be a huge one, even a minor culture shift that says, okay, this is, this is where we're headed so that we don't have to worry about this again in the future. Because let, you know, let's say that whatever the remedy ends up being, it avoids shutting off the funding spigot for the most part, um, but still, you know, imposes remedies on Google. Maybe the remedies that are imposed on Google lead to knock on effects that lead to Google's income falling by so much that they decide they can't afford to fund default search anymore. Uh, they're they're going to approach it in other ways. And that could also be really bad for the web ecosystem. And even if not that, it maybe just kicks the can down the road half a decade or a decade or half a, half a generation. And we end up in the same place. We, it would be much better to get ourselves 
to a place where it doesn't matter if there's one incredibly dominant search engine or or other web service because the the funding of the ecosystem, the health of the ecosystem is not dependent on that. That's really where we need to get. So there's there's sort of two things that I would like to add to this before we wrap up, right? One is a thing that I learned in in, in this that was new to me um, was that one of the people suing Google in, in in this process, like it was a long story here about how all this stuff, but but one yeah. of the things was the army, huh? Like the U.S. Army. Okay. Uh, I would not have expected that, and it's because the U.S. Army is volunteer and they advertise they try to get you to join the army and um mm -hmm. they claim that because of google's monopoly that they ultimately paid they ultimately overpaid and they want money back from google okay um which i thought was really interesting but the reason i bring that up is because it leads into this which is that we, we keep talking about search 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 right but search isn't the thing that brings in money right it's ads okay yes it's driving the traffic. It's bringing the ads. Search is just the way that we do it, right? Um, right, right. Maybe we'll get to a conversational interface, maybe whatever. Um, it could be things like that. So another thing that I learned in this is that, you know, in Google's contract with Apple, uh, if you think about in your Mac OS, you have a spotlight. You know, if you, I don't mm -hmm. know if you use that, but um, if you start typing in there, it will show you some web results. Yeah. Uh, or if you talk to Siri, you have a conversational AI, like I said. And those things, when they're accounted for, Google said that they accounted for like a significant drop in traffic when Apple introduced those things. Hmm. Because those are things that they were no longer using Google search for. And so part of Apple's contract with Google is that they're not allowed to make those things better. So like that's actually part of the contract is that they're not allowed to greatly improve Spotlight or some of the things about like the conversational assistant mm. because it hurts Google's default search. So they're kind of like locked into don't to do those things. Yeah. So that that's important, I think, because default search is the way that we get the eyeballs to the ads. But ultimately, at the end of the day, what what is funding the Internet today is ads. Yep. And it's funding it to the tune of so much money that Google is making wild profits, like wild profits, and still able to pay, you know, everybody to be the default search. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, so mm -hmm. there's wild, wild, wild money coming in, and most of it is going into investors' pockets. You know, it's not actually funding the, the right. real stuff. But, you know, you think you don't pay for it, but you're paying for it, right? I mean, every time I watch a football game and I'm experiencing, like, ads every yeah. five minutes, I am acutely aware of how much I'm paying for it. You know, like, I would pay substantial money to not have that. In fact, I do. Like, I buy Disney Plus and I buy Hulu and I buy Netflix. You know, like, I buy all these things basically because they don't have ads, <laughs> You know, like, I don't want ads. Um, I would rather just pay. Right. And there are infinite options for us to pick other ways to just pay, right? Like, yeah. um, and the thing about ads is that it lets us subsidize and pay with a way that isn't directly money, right? So, so it's really just, like, at the end of the day, a tax. The way that we're levying the tax is through this strange mechanism. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So what's fascinating to me is that... You know, Google throughout this process and Apple and journalists, like everybody who I've heard that's covered this has said, like, if you removed as a default, like you just took away that deal, what do you think would ultimately change? People would still pick Google. Like overwhelmingly, people would still pick Google, right? right. Yeah. Google has made that case. Apple has made the case that they would... There's no amount of money that Microsoft could pay them that would make them use Bing. So if they have to have a default, they would choose Google anyway without the $20 billion annually. So yeah. like what is funding it is this strange like thing that like even if you took it away, it would still kind of continue to work the way that it works for a short time at least, right? Like, mm -hmm. um, yep. Yep. and it's, it's ultimately like that stuff is somehow the levy. It's the, the grease that makes the wheel spin. And I just think there are so many ways that we can look at 
to do that. You know, like I don't, I don't want to just be here to pitch for like a Galia, but like you can work with a Galia and fund the work that makes all this stuff tick, right? Like, um, mm -hmm. you can invest in an engine, like, um, you know, fund some work for Servo, just join the Servo Collective, do get, you know, get sponsorship. Yeah. I mean, we, we need to figure out ways to, to get out of this. And there, there are lots of potential ways, but yeah, I think the, the way that it works now is that the people who are buying things are valuable enough that the crumbs that fall from the ads table <laughs> are, are funding this. And maybe instead of crumbs, a lot of us who have the means could figure a way to, you know, pay it, but it would not, it would not cost much, right? I mean, like I, I have this thing here that seems to suggest that like roughly in 2024, um, Firefox has about 178 million users. Uh, so if you said, okay, if half of them gave a uh, dollar per year, that's like $89 million per year. Um, it's not, you know, the half a billion dollars that they're making, which is for, you know, 450 million or whatever that they're making today. But, uh, you know, all of that is funding all of Mozilla, which as we said, you know, has like a research arm and like a, like a lobbying arm and, you know, they're making, they're doing things with the AI and, you know, like if 50% of those gave a dollar a year, right. You would, that would probably be a lot go, of money, right? Go a long way. Yeah. It would go a long way. $10 a year would, would probably do it. Um, yeah. Anyway. Yes. There, I mean, there are a lot of ways that we could figure this out, but we need to, we need to talk about them. So we're we're not going to find the solution if we're not talking about it. Exactly. <laughs>